Hi. The topic is Marcus Garvey and Africans in the Caribbean. And we're talking to Dr. Ella D., the chairperson of the Africana Studies Department uh, at uh, Tennessee State University. Dr. Ella D., during this last segment, let's give you an, uh, an opportunity to uh, talk about Marcus Garvey and his influence and uh, some of the influences that helped to shape uh, Marcus Garvey as well and some of the uh, influences that his personality and his vision helped to shape as well. Let's talk about it from that perspective. Yeah, when we left off, we said that Marcus Garvey entered this country in 1916. Mm -hmm. Now, it was a time where we were moving toward the Harlem Renaissance, when Harlem, you know, was in vogue. Mm -hmm. And Garvey came to this country and started his organization called the Universal Negro Improvement Association. Mm -hmm. And the time period of Garvey's most uh, powerful influence in this country was between 1916 and 1926. Mm -hmm. So you're talking about within one decade, mm -hmm. here's a man that using the, the power of the spoken word, mm -hmm. uh, saying, up you mighty race, you can accomplish what you will. One God, one aim, one destiny. Mm -hmm. Africa for the Africans at home and abroad. Mm -hmm. He was able to mobilize more than six million people of African descent mm -hmm. around the world. Mm -hmm. I mean, he literally had thousands of chapters of the University of Negro Improvement Station mm -hmm. inside the United States. Mm -hmm. Garvey's basic vision was to create um, a United States of Africa. Mm -hmm. This was during a time, we're talking about right after the First World War, mm -hmm. uh, when imperialism was entrenched in Africa. They needed the natural resources there in Africa. The Germans had fought a war against the colonizers in order to colonize the colonizers, mm -hmm. which failed. And uh, so Garvey now is coming to seize Africa. Mm -hmm. And as he's agitating to seize Africa, decolonize the Caribbean, mm -hmm. he becomes a big threat in this country. Mm -hmm. And he became so much of a threat that J. Edgar Hoover infiltrated this movement, and for the first time in the history of the Federal Bureau of Investigation, mm -hmm. he actually hired an African American mm -hmm. with a code name 800, mm -hmm. not just an uh, you know, uh, informal person, mm -hmm. but a person actually on the payroll mm -hmm. to infiltrate his organization. And when his organization was infiltrated, they accused him of mail fraud because mm -hmm. he had started the Black Star Line. Mm -hmm. This was a big shipping company that he wanted to put together in order to do trade mm -hmm. between the Caribbeans and Africa and African Americans inside the United States. Mm -hmm. And Garvey had these very grandiose designs. Mm -hmm. He was full of pomp and pageantry. Mm -hmm. He knew mm -hmm. how to raise money. Mm -hmm. Very, very charismatic. Mm -hmm. You know, he had the type of charisma of, say, a well, Martin Luther King mm -hmm. or a Malcolm X. But he could just move, stand on a street corner and just move thousands of people. And uh, he was very powerful in that regard. Mm -hmm. Now, his organization was composed of West Indians and African Americans. Mm -hmm. And as you know, sometimes West Indians and African Americans don't always see eye to mm -hmm. eye. So you had this type of tension in the organization. Mm -hmm. You also had tension in the organization around the question of people who were educated and those that were uneducated, mm -hmm. people from the South, people from the North. And there was some corruption in the organization because he surrounded himself a lot by people that he could trust, mm -hmm. but not necessarily people that were competent, people that were loyal to him, but not necessarily competent. Mm -hmm. So that was part of his undoing. And he built the organization around himself mm -hmm. rather than delegating responsibility mm -hmm. and leadership. And then there were some areas where he didn't have competencies. Mm -hmm. And so that uh, created this problem inside of the organization. Mm -hmm. But when he was eventually uh, arrested for mail fraud, he was taken to prison mm -hmm. in Atlanta around 1926. Mm -hmm. And when he got out in 1928, uh, they sent him straight back, they deported him, rather, mm -hmm. back to Jamaica mm -hmm. and told him he couldn't come back inside the United States. So after 1928, his power inside of this country and around the world started mm -hmm. to wane mm -hmm. in terms of his organization. But his vision did not go away because you have to remember, while he was talking about uh, uniting people of African descent around mm -hmm. the world, Du Bois was also organizing his Pan-African Congresses mm -hmm. during the 1920s as well. And so they were working concurrently. Du Bois was organizing the intellectuals, mm -hmm. and Garvey was organizing the masses the of the people. people. Uh -huh. Yes. Mm -hmm. He left uh, Jamaica because by the time he got back to Jamaica, he tried to start up some businesses. Many of them failed. And he was just somewhat, a period of time, he was a hero. And then the other period of time, mm -hmm. you know, that sort of wane, and the people turned on him. Mm -hmm. So he left uh, Jamaica and went back to London mm -hmm. around 1935. And so he pretty much died there in London. A very interesting incident happened in January of 1940. He had a massive stroke. Mm -hmm. And while he was trying to recover from the stroke, George Padmore, 
the author of the book Pan-Africanism and Communism, mm -hmm. who I think Pat was also from Trinidad, mm -hmm. put an obituary in a column of, of a paper inside this country mm -hmm. saying that Marcus Garvey had died and they put his obituary mm -hmm. in the paper and everything. And when he found, he read a copy of that paper in June mm -hmm. of 1940, mm -hmm. he had a second massive heart oh, attack and mm -hmm. he died, mm -hmm. you know, because he, he died a, a person who did not really accomplish all he set out mm -hmm. to accomplish. He never actually went to Africa, mm -hmm. even though he wanted to go to Liberia and mm -hmm. claim that republic and start his base there. Mm -hmm. He wanted to go to Sierra Leone, but he never got on mm -hmm. African soil. The closest he got to Africa was London. Mm -hmm. And so in that sense, he died pretty much a tragic, mm -hmm. a per tragic hero in mm -hmm. a sense. But at the same time, mm -hmm. in 1935, while he's in London, another person, is at Lincoln University by the name of Kwame Nkrumah. Mm -hmm. He picks up Garvey's book, uh, The Philosophy and Opinions of Marcus Garvey. He reads this book thoroughly. In 1945, he goes back to the Gold Coast and starts to implement mm -hmm. the vision of Marcus Garvey. In other words, you can kill the dreamer, but, but you, you can't, can't kill, kill the dream. dream. Uh -huh. So the dream of Garvey was mm -hmm. reincarnated on African soil mm -hmm. in Kwame Nkrumah. Mm -hmm. And then when he uh, got independence for Ghana, in 1957, March of mm -hmm. 1957, mm -hmm. he actually adopted the flag that Garvey cr mm -hmm. created, the, the, the uh, red, black, and green. Mm -hmm. And uh, if you look at the flag of Ghana, now they have the same colors except mm -hmm. there's gold in the middle because Ghana is known for mm -hmm. gold. And they also have the black star sitting right mm -hmm. inside of that mm -hmm. flag. So Nkrumah was definitely inspired by Garvey. We had other movements, uh, the Moor Science Temple movement mm -hmm. with Noble Drew Ali was inspired by Garvey. And of course, we know that Malcolm X parents were part of the Garvey movement mm -hmm. and that's how he got his early indoctrination mm -hmm. with Pan-Africanism and Islam mm -hmm. and then toward the end, after he left the Nation of Islam then he went back to establish his organization called the Organization of Afro-American mm -hmm. Unity which was modeled in, in a certain way mm -hmm. after Garvey's Universal Negro Improvement mm -hmm. Association. Mm -hmm. So that whole Pan-African dream of you can talk about people like Stokely Carmichael, mm -hmm. Kwame Ture, also from mm -hmm. Trinidad mm -hmm. inspired by Marcus Garvey. Mm -hmm. So the, 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 the children of Marcus Garvey mm -hmm. are still very much alive. Yeah, so there's a real legacy. Oh yeah, there's you, a legacy that, that you Garvey talk about created. now when you yes. talk about. Mm -hmm. And uh, he in, inspired uh, Jomo Kenyatta. Mm -hmm in Kenya uh, to, to create the Mau Mau and bring mm -hmm. about independence in Kenya. So the, 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 the book, the, the jury is still out in mm -hmm. terms of the impact of mm -hmm. Garvey on, on people around mm -hmm. the world. And then, of course, when Maulana Karinga creates Kwanzaa, mm -hmm. you know, he adopts the colors of red, black, and green. You have the red, the green, and the black mm -hmm. candles, and also the bandera, which is mm -hmm. Swahili for flag. Mm -hmm. So they adopt that flag. Mm -hmm. So Garvey's influence is still here. And every time you see one, someone walking around with red, black, and green on, or a mm -hmm. flag, or an armband, mm -hmm. or something like that, or a cap, you know mm -hmm. that's the influence of Marcus Garvey. Mm -hmm. Marcus Garvey influenced Bob Marley with mm -hmm. the Rastafarian movement. Mm -hmm. So he picked up the colors of, mm -hmm. of Marcus Garvey. Of course, mm -hmm. uh, uh, Bob Marley was also from Jamaica. He grew mm -hmm. up in Trenchtown, but mm -hmm. Garvey was a great influence on, mm -hmm. on Bob Marley as well. And, and, mm -hmm. and, and I think, uh, Dr. Allen, we might say that uh, even some of the more uh, popular uh, activities that Africans are involved in, African street fair Absolutely. Uh, festival, for example, mm -hmm. uh, all in a real sense can be said to go back to that period of w with the influence of Marcus Garvey, the economic influence, and et cetera. There's no mm -hmm. doubt about it, mm -hmm. yeah. And also with the creation of the Organization of African Unity mm -hmm. on the African continent, which is a framework designed mm -hmm. to unify mm -hmm. Africa. And you can mm -hmm. trace that mm -hmm. back to Marcus Garvey mm -hmm. as well. Well, now, what can we do over the last minute and a half, okay. uh, Dr. Dr. L.D., to uh, make uh, Garvey's career uh, much more uh, public? It seems that only uh, the historians and people like yourself uh, know about Marcus Garvey. What would you suggest over the last minute that we have that could be done in order to sort of resurrect uh, Marcus Garvey and his influence? Well, one thing we're going to do with the 11th Annual African Studies uh, Conference mm -hmm is that Saturday, which would be the 4th uh, or 5th of uh, uh, February, mm -hmm. we're going to have a Garvey Marley concert. Mm -hmm. And that's going to be an annual feature mm -hmm. of our uh, annual conferences mm -hmm. to make young people more aware mm -hmm. of the teachings of Garvey. Mm -hmm. I mean, I use Garvey's philosophy and opinion mm -hmm. in my classes, mm -hmm. and I constantly expose students mm -hmm. to that. Mm -hmm. So in, in, in the small way in which I'm working, mm -hmm. I'm trying to make Garvey's ideas mm -hmm. effective. And then we need to have more conferences and, and, and mm -hmm. meetings centered around Garvey's idea. Because a lot of people think that Garvey was just talking about 
putting people on African Americans mm -hmm. or black people on ships and then taking them back to Africa. Mm -hmm. His plan was much larger mm -hmm. than that. He was talking about creating the United States of Africa, mm -hmm. and then where African people are, they can still relate back to the motherland, even Very though they good. might remain in the African diaspora physically, Very spiritually, good. and in, in culture. They and of course, with Dr. Allen D., we, we, we're out of time again, as you <laughs> generally know. And mm -hmm. let me thank you for coming by and giving us that excellent information about Garvey and some of his activities. And let me encourage our audience to tune in again next week for another informative edition of Comments. Thank you, and good morning. <laughs>